the second of a series, Who's Next Door? This uh, particular evening, we are visiting the Oberlin Police Station. And if you look carefully, you'll see there are numbers in front of me, and already I'm in trouble. I guess the fingerprinting and photography comes next. In the hopes of getting out of this, I'm going to uh, turn you over to our host for this evening, uh, Police Chief Bobby Jones. who may give me a reprieve. <laughs> uh, Chief, uh, what, where would you like to start? Would you like to give us a little history of this rather interesting building, which, by the way, most people hopefully will never see, except on tours? Or would you rather give us a tour of the facilities, or both? I'll turn it over to you, and we're very appreciative of your having us here. Well, thank you. I'll give you a little history uh, of the building that was built in 1986 and became operational in 1987. I must say that this particular facility here is one of the most updated facilities in the uh, state of Ohio. Uh, if you want, I would like to take you through the process of a person being booked in the jail and the process that we go through and maybe uh, we'll go and visit the cells and, and the facility uh, to let the people see our fine facility. That sounds fine. That, that cell that he was speaking of was something that they originally thought they would lock me in to for uh, effect, but fortunately uh, we don't have bars on cells anymore, as you'll soon see. So I escaped that fate. Well, first I think we should start at, once we arrest the person and bring them into the Sally port uh, with the, in the cruiser, and we'll start from that point. Okay, now, uh, we do have a question here as to why a sally port is called a sally port. I have no idea. Okay, we answered that question. It could be called a Donnie port or a sally port, but they like to call it a sally port. I suppose there's a term sally forth. I suppose it's something like that. I don't, I don't know. We will not worry about that at the moment. Uh, lead on. Okay. What uh, can you tell us about this room? Okay, we will start first by when the officers come into the sally port, uh, the door will close. He, by radio communication, advised the dispatcher to close the door, and I will do this. Now that the door is down, and we assume the prisoner is still in the cruiser, okay, in yeah. this room. At this point, the officer gets out of his cruiser, comes to this, this weapons locker, take, put his weapon in, lock the locker, and he takes a key. This will, he secures the key with him. He then goes back to the cruiser, gets the uh, client, or, or the prisoner. Customer, whatever customer, we want to yes. say. <laughs> Bring him up to the door, and the then request for the doors to be open uh, for the dispatcher to let him in. We might also add that everything in this building is electronically controlled as to doors and things of that nature. It is electronically controlled by the dispatchers who are in the central communication center. Now we have the prisoner inside. Uh, what is next? Okay, at this time the prisoner is brought inside and he's put into the holding room. Uh, it's placed here, uh, as you can see, there's an opening here. Sometimes we have prisoners who are very violent and, and they need to be continuously handcuffed. Um, they're placed in here, and once they are secured and we feel that they can be let out physically, uh, we, can, uh, we can unlock the handcuffs and start the process. Uh, first we want to do is to make sure all the items from the prisoner uh, uh, is secured. And before we came into the sally port, into the booking area here, uh, they would be searched again. And then we were brought out, and next we're going to do is to take the uh, prisoner's photo. Uh, mm -hmm. And by this, this is the same place that you were at. Mm -hmm. uh, we placed the prisoner on the wall, and uh, on the front of the log here, it states the prisoner's number and the date that he was booked, he or mm -hmm. she was booked. Uh, at this time, they will give us a front profile and then turn to the right or to the left to give us a side profile. Mm -hmm. uh, the picture is in second is uh, in, this, in this camera, 
and it would be held until the film is uh, completed and then we'll get it uh, uh, developed. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point, uh, we'll, we'll do the fingerprints. Uh, at this point, uh, prisoners brought here, uh, take out a, a fingerprint card. We have three different fingerprint cards. One is for our records, two uh, is one is for the FBI, and the third one is for BCI, Bureau of Criminal, Criminal Investigation Identification in Columbus. And basically what happens is that we take these prints and we process them to the feds and to the state to see if they are wanted suspects any place else in the nation. Okay? Once they are brought here and, and they have been fingerprinted, we take them back here and set them down. And at this point, we have to go to a pre-questionary, pre-questionary, uh, um, suicide uh, informative uh, program, a questionnaire. And basically what we do is to see if they have any tendencies to commit suicide while they are being held in the police department here. This is a series of questions that it's you a, ask them. It's a series of questions, uh, pre-questions that we give them and ask them and if they um, uh, if their numbers uh, add up to a certain number and we feel that there are te uh, tendencies of suicide, then we have to call a uh, psychiatrist immediately uh, to uh, do additional tests on the individual. Now, while we're right here, I might add we have a detox room too, don't we? Yes. If, if the person uh, is highly uh, intoxicated, uh, we take them to the detox tank. Uh, the de detox tank is a very heavily uh, rubber tank where uh, we can place them until they become detoxized or, or sober. Uh, and because it being rubberized, uh, they cannot uh, hurt themselves. Uh, Might be a good place for small children to yeah. lighten it at home. <laughs> it's uh, a seat in place uh, where nothing can be moved. It's all rubberized and we have an in-floor flushing system in case uh, they vomit or, mm -hmm. um, or want to other, do other things. And wash it down in a hurry. Wash it down mm -hmm. in a hurry, yes. Okay. Once the uh, prisoner has been booked, uh, if he is intoxicated, he, if he or she is intoxicated, they're placed in the uh, detox uh, room uh, whereby we have to uh, inspect them every 15 minutes. Uh, and there's a question, say, how do we know they're intoxicated? It obvious, it's obvious by their physical appearance. Or if there is a question, if they are intoxicated, we have a detoxalizer here, a breathalyzer that they call it, where we give the test to see uh, how much blood alcohol contents that they have. Is that a fairly rapid process? Uh, this takes about uh, 15 minutes to give. Okay. And you get the results we, almost immediately? or We get the results immediately. immediately. Okay, it's called BAC, breath, breath alcohol, mm -hmm. alcohol content. Okay. We then move them back into to the cell. If at any time uh, a prisoner becomes violent or if they need to be strip searched, uh, sometimes prisoners, if we have a very, uh, if there's an indication that they have drugs on them, or any kind of paraphernalia. Uh, we have a strip shower room in here where they can either take a shower in order to clean up or that we can bring them here in privacy uh, in order to strip search them. So move back into the cells now. This is operated by a satellite uh, uh, box here that where we can operate it or it can be operated from the central uh, communications center. Which opens and closes all the doors in this section. Right? Yes, which opens right. and closes all the doors. As you noted on, on the walls is that we have uh, intercom. We have intercom to every station in the department and the only thing you have to do is punch the button in order to get a response from the central dispatcher. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, Department here, uh, compartment rather, is the uh, three male cells. Uh, we have three male cells and one female cell, which is on the other side. Uh, as as you note, uh, 
we do not have bars on uh, the cells. It's totally uh, glass shatterproof. Uh, cannot be broken or shattered. And once inside, uh, that we put a prisoner, when we put a prisoner inside, if the prisoner uh, wants to bang his head or anything, we have an intercom inside which will pick up at a certain decimal and it will automatically open to the central dispatcher to let her know that something's going on back here and uh, we can respond. Our state mandate laws say that we have to uh, come back and visually inspect the prisoners uh, once every 30 minutes. I'm going to go into the cell, if I may, and see, check it out here. I won't say all the comforts of home, but I will, I will say that I've been in motels that weren't much better equipped or, or more fancy than this. Well, uh, some, a little comfort that we have for uh, the prisoners is that we have a day room back where they, they can watch television and being that this is a five-day facility, uh, once they're here for 24 hours, we are um, obligated to place them in a day room where they can either read or look at television. Shall we take a look? Certainly can. And we're going by the two other cells now, which yeah, are all like... Okay. This is certainly nothing very fancy. If we can get a shot here, we'll see that this is not exactly your 27-inch television screen. By the way, it's black and white. Too. Black and white. While we're while he's doing that, Chief, uh, tell me something about how these people eat when they're here. What uh, what kind of uh, cuisine do they get? <laughs> <laughs> well, the state. Uh, state uh, mandates us to feed them three square meals a day, uh, nutritious meals. Uh, we order from the local restaurants and, uh, and we record what, they, uh, uh, what they're given and the state comes in every year to audit um, what we give the prisoners and uh, what kind of treatment uh, that, that we also give. What do you do about utensils and dishes? Are they unbreakable and things they can't uh, use as weapons? Oh, no metal oh. utensils at all, mm -hmm. or, or glass, uh, they're all given plastic. Plastic. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I believe I'm correct in saying is that over the years, and certainly during the years you've been chief, the state and federal requirements that require paperwork have just mounted, haven't they? Yes, uh, during the uh, processing and booking of an indi uh, individual prisoner, it takes approximately one hour just to uh, just to clear for booking. Mm -hmm. Go in now to where the um, the I want to say lady cell is that the right the female cell is and that's also I believe the route to the court if you were taking prisoners. Right. I, I must explain first is that the state mandates that the uh, male and female population cannot intermingle with one another, nor have visible um, uh, or physical uh, touch with one another. So. The female is kept completely out of sight uh, from the male cells and from the male processing. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, it's in a different room. <laughs> what would you do if you have more than one uh, female on the where well, You would put them both in the same we cell? We put them both in the same cell and, and probably uh, uh, transport one to the county. County jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Chief, as I look at this particular cell, I noticed that the lady uh, is a little more equal than the men in, in that she has a television set. Well, not so equal. Uh, this is sort of con for convenience uh, for the department is because of the they can't be mixed and we do have a day room mm -hmm. for the males. The uh, uh, female prisoner is given the same provisions mm -hmm. and uh, uh, facilities as the, as the male. Tell them about the uh, modesty screen. I love the modesty uh, screen. Concept. This screen uh, is in front of uh, the female cell, so that when we do, so that we when we do transport uh, males to the courts through here, is that they cannot look into the female cells. I will have this. Uh, 
the screen put down is that when we do we do transport people out this way to the courts, uh, mm -hmm. then they cannot uh, look into the female cell. Sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. I might add that the reason for this screen is that the state mandates there be no visual contact of any kind uh, between the male and female prisoners. And the, allow the, uh, female prison privacy too. Yes. Sure. Now we're going to open the door that goes out into the corridor to the uh, uh, courtroom. And this will uh, take us directly into court. Uh, where the person will not be exposed uh, um, to any outside interference. It goes from here mm -hmm. right into the courts. Mm -hmm. Which is much better than it used to be when we had to take them outdoors. Right, right. right. Uh, this is a communication center. Communication center, okay. Yes, and um, dispatchers here control the total building, uh, whether it's through opening doors, or talking to prisoners, or talking to someone on the outside, or running our, our lead system for wanted persons or identification, whether it's observing our monitors to see what's outside or what's inside, whether it's our radio dispatch, uh, is that there are several things that go on here. Uh, right here is a control board which visibly... Perhaps we can get a TV shot of this board. This is for each switch or each door or each electric connection or something? Yes, this is a floor plan of the jail and it the lights indicate whether the doors are open or closed and and by merely touching a switch is that we can uh, either turn a light on or turn it off or uh, we can open the door or whatever we want to do here uh, this switch here controls our our blinds which sometimes uh, you can see clear through completely through the jail as then if we uh, wanted to close off to the public uh, we can and hang them either way we want to this is our intercom control system uh, that we can talk to any station in the building that we want to uh, we can uh, talk to the prisoners talk to the outside whatever we want to uh, over here is that we have our lead system is that when the officers are out on the road and they call in a license number uh, with in seconds we can get the identification of the driver or the owner and if that person is wanted anywhere in in the nation basically mm -hmm. we have our tv monitors that monitors the outside because we have no prisoners at the present time on the inside we we cut those off just to save you, and these would these would monitor the cells from the outside of the, as yes we monitor cells on the inside on the interior uh -huh. you know of the booking area yes mm -hmm. uh, here we have a VCR that in the booking area that if we bring a violent person in if they want to fight or anything is that we can record that and have that uh, evidence ready for court to show how you also do are. this don't you with uh, intoxicated drivers or intoxicated drivers who uh, who claim that they only had two beers and mm -hmm. and do a series of uh, physical tests uh, to show to the courts uh, exactly what condition they're in uh, this is our control console our control console we have at least five stations on here uh, one is that it controls our cars and the sheriff department and several other uh, uh, police departments in the area. We can go to another uh, a station and it will control. Uh, we can talk to fire the fire department. Uh, we can uh, help them uh, do whatever they have to do. And we have the street department and the light department. And we also have uh, open college security. Clear four o'clock. Then over here on the left, you have while she's doing that, you have the uh, this is our where where the public can probably would first uh, contact anybody here okay. in person. Yes, that's uh, that is physically. Uh, through that's the door. our reception, uh, a basic reception desk. Uh, the uh, open glass that you see there is uh, bulletproof. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody we won't have to worry about anyone coming. Uh, coming in to uh -huh. uh, do acts of violence. Mm -hmm. uh, to the left there is a pass-through uh, box where 
Uh, no one can just open up the door and throw a package in. Mm -hmm. They have to close the door first, and we have to open it up before it would open. Both doors cannot be open at the same time. Um, over here, we go from our control console to our our alarm panels. And these are silent alarm panels uh, throughout uh, the downtown area and and throughout throughout the uh, city itself. They're silent. And well, when and if someone burglarized the place, or whatever the case may be, yeah. is that right. we will get a signal here. Right, right. The well, person who's committing, committing the robbery or the yeah. burglar will not know that this is going off, and the reason why we call it silent, and the officers can respond. And now, uh, each one of those is for a separate business. Is each right? one or is for building? each one is for a separate building or a bank you know or mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, over here, uh, we have our recorders. Yes, uh, uh, it's a, a dual cassette recorder, uh, and basically it records all of our radio transmission and all of our telephone transmission. Uh, it will stay inactive until the call is made, and then it become active and uh, pick up either the conversation on radio or conversation on, on, the, uh, on the telephone. How long do you have to keep these tapes legally? We, we have to keep the tapes. We keep them for a month. You can keep them as long as you want to. And what we have is a ro rotating system here is that once the tape is out, it's put in a rotating system in order to, uh, so we can keep it as long as we want to. Mm -hmm. And if any major incident happened, that tape is immediately taken out of, of the rotating process and saved as evidence. And occasionally I imagine that happens. Mm -hmm. It does, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this is our training conference room. Okay. And uh, in this room, we, as you can see, the stacked chairs here, and we either have training sessions or whatever. We also combine this into a report writing room. Uh, now that we've updated our computer system, we allow this section here for our computers and for the officers to do the report on the computer. Uh, here we have a dividing uh, conference room, which we call a library, and also training too, as that yes, yes. all of all of the law books are available for for the officers who need to do research. Uh, we also have training film and uh, and their monitor there that uh, if any new or special program that the officers want to to review that they can and 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 find out about. And from there, I guess we can go into other administrative offices. Okay. So, office of the executive area, is that correct? Uh, that's correct, and we have a, a number of, of, of alleyways here, we might say, that uh, in here is the administrative uh, assistance uh, a room. Uh, this is the Wilbon. She takes care of all of the uh, payroll reports, uh, uh, crime st statistics, and 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 all of the liaison um, uh, communication between my office and other offices. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my office there. Uh, to the rear there is the uh, captain of police, Captain Verdu, who is my executive officer. And to the right of that, we have the juvenile, the juvenile bureau, and the detective bureau, and of course the auxiliary. Uh, room mm -hmm. that we use. Uh, and if we walk this way, what do we come to? We come back uh, out? To the right here, to the right here, right here this. we have what we call a report room, and the report room is adjacent to the administrative part and also adjacent to the outside lobby. So when someone comes in and want to uh, make a report, is that they can come into this office here at the report room, and we can come in from the administrative side and, and take the report. Now, Chief, there are some interesting patches here, uh, I gather, from police departments in other places. Yes, we have uh, patches uh, from police departments and agencies from all around the world. Uh, from, uh, and and Over here we have one case, and I guess there's another one there, is that right? And, 
Yes. One behind me over here is gradually filling up the lobby walls. Yes and all, we have uh, close to about 500 patches, some of which we just we do not have room for. Uh, these patches are, are collected when the officers attend uh, uh, seminars uh, outside of our jurisdiction. Uh, sometimes they are collected through exchange. Um, for example, I went uh, to the FBI Academy and had 250 uh, other members there and we exchange uh, patches, each one. So, so these are where the patches, mm -hmm. this is where the patches come from. Lobby, I guess, aren't we, from the looks of things? Uh, people uh, who have been in Oberlin for a while will know that there used to be, in the direction we're facing, a uh, Fisher food store, and that was converted into a city hall and with a courtroom and council chamber, executive offices and the like. Some years later, uh, about eight years later, I think it was, uh, the concept of adding a police station to the city hall uh, was put into effect, and that's what we're in now and where we're right at the front. And so there is sort of an angle here to our right, which is all glass, looking out at, it, at an angle. We're looking northwest if we were to look in this direction. Uh, and uh, perhaps you'd like to say a word or two about this concept. Well, it's, as you know, uh, when this particular location was suggested, there was much debate over it mm -hmm. uh, through all of our planning process. What we had decided is that we wanted our the department in close proximity of the courts mm -hmm. and, and of the city administration. So we decided on this particular location here. But in designing the building, uh, we decided that uh, it would not be a long gated building, a uh, long building where administrative is up front and the jail is out back. We decided to sort of circle it around the other part of the administration building and the court building. And by that way, we basically got a central fact where the central mm -hmm. dispatcher is to control the total building. Mm -hmm. By that design is that we did not have to hire any more people to man a certain station mm -hmm. is that the central station could control the whole building. I might add too this building is debt free this uh, police station we were able to build it with the one half of one percent income tax uh, for capital improvements and that was a a, uh, a very uh, good thing in itself. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we thank you immensely? Well, I, sure. I, I thank you for visiting our facility. Uh, I can say that uh, since the facility has been built, it's been looked upon uh, as a modern facility for, from other departments. And uh, again, it's a really update building and a highly tech building. State uh, considers it that too, does it not? Very it much so. Mm -hmm. Do, are much. they bringing people in to uh, see it? At we are the planning buildings. We often get planning uh, committees and um, people from other uh, departments to come in and look at it before they uh, build their buildings. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob, on behalf of our viewers of Who's Next Door, we would like to thank you for allowing us to visit you today and uh, to see the workings of the police department. Next month, on Thursday, March 24th, we will be taking you inside the Federal Aviation Administration Building to show you how they keep all the planes from uh, crashing into one another. Thank you uh, all very much for listening and being with us tonight, uh, and we wish you a good night from Who's Next Door.